Welcome to the Chicago Bears Podcast. A presentation of ESPN Chicago, Chicago's home for sports. Here's your host, Pat, the designer. Bad on Bears fans, welcome into a Tuesday edition of the Chicago Bears podcast. What's going on, Chicago? Pat the designer, Courtney Cronin, as always. We got some interesting comments yesterday from Kevin Warren about this entire Arlington Heights, situ- Arlington Heights situation. And uh, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, we kind of all were like, this is a easy. They're going to be there. It's going to be fun. Kevin Warren's kind of talking like this is going to be something serious. We'll get into that. It's still Bears Packers week, so we got to talk about the rivalry. And Courtney with a little bit different perspective on uh, who the Packers' biggest <laughs> rival actually may be. All that and more on today's episode of the Chicago Bears podcast. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page. Let's get into the show. Courtney, how are you? You got a, you got deliveries going on over we, there. There's, there's, you're living the life and potting. Just, there's just a lot going on. Like I woke up this morning, the whole city's in smog thanks to the Canadian wildfires. So don't yeah. open your windows. Yeah, for I, real. You guys are playing golf south of here, right? So you'll you should be okay. Let's hope. We should be okay, I would think. But I don't I don't know, man. Like the 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 smog is is coming through thick. I yeah, it is. I can't it's not so I'm in Westchester. It's not here, but I'm close enough to the city that I looked out my window and I was like, "What is that?" Yeah, it's like a hazy cloud that we're just kind of that's enveloped the entire city, a hazy blanket, if you want to call it that. So hopefully that doesn't affect your golf, but we're moving on. I mean, the the hopefully it'll dissipate here in a couple of days. I think we dealt with this a few weeks ago. One day when we were out yeah. of practice, I could tell uh, during OTAs that that wildfire smoke, it wasn't as bad as what the Giants had when they had to like cancel yeah. or move it indoors. But hopefully we don't get to that point. Yeah, that's that's the goal. That's the goal. Uh, but, you know, we do got a, a little bit of an interesting comments going on here from Kevin Warren. Me and you had both talked about how he was a it, it seemed like a. I'm not going to be pushed around kind of situation, but that they would end up in Arlington. Very interesting yesterday at a town hall meeting, Kevin Warren basically talking with the people of Arlington Use some very interesting words in these statements here. Uh, he, these were tweeted out by Jeff Arnold, uh, who was at the meeting. Basically said, Warren says, this is, this is one of the tweets he put out. Warren says, negotiations with Arlington Heights have been more convoluted <laughs> than expected, which led the Bears to open up conversations with other pieces. Need sure it's a win-win proposition says the two biggest factor in the bears the things that the bears are looking for is fairness and clarity so courtney it does not sound like the chicago bears and arlington heights relationship is getting off to a good start here does this worry you at all in the bears ending up in arlington heights not necessarily. The only thing it would work that would like be a cause of concern right now is the timeline. Like if they were planning to start, you know, excavating because we know they tore down the grandstand that happened yep. a couple weeks ago. And if the plan was shovels in the ground in 2023, the timeline for that looks like it could be getting pushed back a little bit. But what Kevin Warren said that didn't surprise me because you wouldn't be fielding any conversation from Waukegan, no. from Naperville, even the city of Chicago, although we still don't know exactly what was discussed there other than just like <laughs> opportunities for collaboration. Yeah. But the lack of communication with Arlington Heights is what has the Bears and Arlington Heights at a stalemate. And that's unfortunate just in terms of the timing where we thought you know the Tev- Kevin Warren gets in here new team president they're ushering a move from Soldier Field to Arlington Heights I think that maybe some people thought this is going to be an easier process than than we expected yeah. and this shows you how many hoops you have to jump through how many bureaucratic policies you have to like untangle to make something like this happen Remember, when Kevin Warren got U.S. Bank Stadium built, he didn't have to go through this part of it. Of course, like with the city of Minneapolis, there was there was a lot of back and forth that they had to they had to iron out. But that was on the site of the Metrodome. Yeah. 
this is a brand new site and the issue with like the tax bill, like they're not going to proceed in Arlington Heights until there's an agreement on that for the land that they purchased $197.2 million for the 326 acre property. And it just feels like we're waiting to see who blinks first. I, I read a couple articles. I know the Chicago Tribune had one up and it was from an Arlington Heights resident. It sounds like this was like a town hall sort of format yeah, yeah, yeah. that they had people out at. And the question, I think, you know, the team, the team is proposed paying $4.3 million in property taxes for the land. That is $1.5 million higher than what the former owner of that land, Churchill Downs, paid for the same yeah. land. So there's a discrepancy where you, like, I mean, in terms of like, you know, an NFL franchise, the millions of dollars that they have, $1.5 million doesn't seem like a lot, but this stuff adds up. And you want to be in a situation where, or you don't want to be in a situation where the expense and the taxes and everything that the land was valued at gets thrown out the window and you're paying way more than you, and you're off budget at that point. Yeah. It's just not smart business. So I, I think that what Kevin Warren was there to do yesterday in speaking to local residents, like, you know, he wants school districts, you know, within that area, Arlington Heights to be back to the negotiating table he wants, you know, businesses too to get involved because if we want, if, you know, I think that the thinking is for the bears, if we want to get this done, it's not just the Chicago bears that have to push this thing through with the, with Cook County and with the city of Arlington Heights, it's, you know, they, they need other influential figures in that area to help contribute to the conversation, to try to get some of these things ironed out and get some of these things pushed through that they might not be able to do solely on their own. It's it's weird when I hear I feel like we're getting a one sided viewpoint of it. And because really, because Arlington hasn't said anything. Said, yeah, that's but, the but my my biggest question on all of this is what is why is our why does it seem like Arlington has kind of tried to slip these taxes in? out of nowhere. That's basically the point that Kevin Warren is saying, like, you know, we we had an agreement. We believed on this number. We thought we were here. And all of a sudden you had us all the way over here. That's why the Bears have a problem with this. And so I need I think the one thing that we haven't heard from is Arlington Heights. And and I think that's probably it speaks to what Kevin Warren is saying in the lack of communication, the lack of, you know, talking between sides, the lack of because there is no statement by Arlington Heights. There's just we're going to get it done. Yeah, it's like, I, I, don't, I don't know if you are. <laughs> it's I just think that, like, if. If you don't have, like, they, they clearly anticipated that something like this could pop up in yeah. the process. Otherwise, they really wouldn't have gone through with buying the land in the first place. And yes, that was before, that was when Ted Phillips was the, still the team president of the Chicago Bears before Kevin Warren. And you bring someone like Kevin Warren in as a power broker here because he knows how to, he knows the right parties and like who he has to talk to to make these things go through. But it does feel like, okay, there was an agreement in place. And then th there's all these like hiccups that happen and that, you know, that just weren't anticipating. But I think that you, you are expected to anticipate, you anticipate expecting that there will be things that surprise you along the way, which is why I think this was a timely move for Kevin Warren to be part of this town hall, just to explain to people what's going on. Because it's yeah. like, if Arlington Heights isn't going to talk, at least the bears are going to put this out there that, Hey, look, it's not, we're trying, we're trying to have communication. There's been no communication. We're at a stalemate. We want to get this thing done. We want to have, you know, local businesses involved. We want to give people, you know, the ability to, you know, how is this going to work with the villages existing downtown? How is it going to be like a walkable area? Like the whole thing, not just the stadium, but the entire complex around it and what it does for the city of Arlington Heights. I, I just think it was a really smart move for this to happen now to give some sort of update because you're not getting it from the place that at least the perception is Arlington Heights is the holdup in all of this. Yeah. It, and uh, here's the one part that, right, like we we kind of talked about this as, you know, maybe the Bears, OK, we're going to go out and look other places and. You know, th this is, you know, just to get Arlington Heights to kind of put their feet to the fire. This quote here says uh, Warren says that he does not believe in negotiating tactics <laughs> and says the Bears have heard from multiple municipalities, including Lake Forest, on Monday afternoon on his drive to Arlington Heights. So 
basically Kevin Warren saying, no, this ain't a joke. Like, <laughs> I don't think Arlington, I think Arlington Heights believes it is. Sure. Kevin Warren basically telling them, like, you know, like, we can still own this land, do whatever we want with it, and build a stadium somewhere. Like, where the Chicago freaking Bears? We can find some they money. they really wanted to. And <laughs> yeah. that's, like, I understand why Kevin Warren would say that, because, of course, the natural inclination, like, when you and I are having this conversation, most people you ask, like, are the Bears going to end up in Arlington Heights? The answer yeah. is, yeah, eventually. Like, it might just be diving through, you know, hoop after hoop to get this thing done, but eventually they'll end up in Arlington Heights. I've always said... They didn't buy that piece of land. Like, remember, like, in all the legal legalese that was, like, in, you know, the last couple, over the last year, all of the releases that were put out, all of the language in there. Like, if we decide to develop the property, like, it might not be a stadium. Like, all this stuff that was put out there to cover the, you know, to cover themselves in case something fell through, in case something happens. So, I think that what Kevin Warren here is trying to do is show, hey, we can, we have other options. Realistically, this is their best option if they can get, you know, the tax bill and everything that's been the holdup ironed out. But like, like I've said, like so many others have said, they didn't buy this plot of land to develop a shopping mall or like, yeah. you know, have the Chicago Bears develop some sort of, you know, real estate venture. That's just not what they were intending to do. Yeah, I just think this whole thing's going to take a lot longer than we had initially anticipated because Arlington Heights said that they're not going to allow this project to move forward unless the team can show them like what the economic benefits going to be. And it better be a net economic benefit to the area. I think that this is the stuff that you have to like continue to have these sorts of meetings to meet with city leaders, to meet with the, you know, people on the Cook County board to make sure you show, okay, this is not just going to be a benefit for the Chicago bears. We're adding to this area. We're not taking from it. And I, I, this is above my pay grade. I don't know how, how you show, hey, housing in this area and property values will go up because this, because the stadium is here. I don't know how any of that works. Whoever is helping on this project, yeah. which is why Kevin Warren, why this stuff takes a while, but why he has to form his team of people, which is not complete yet to my understanding. There's more people that are going to be coming over from other places to the Bears, some people who have worked on stadium projects with him before, to make sure you get this thing done the right way. Cause if you haven't done it yet and the bears haven't, their soldier field has been their home for the last 50 years. That is what they, that's what they know. And it hasn't exactly been a, you know, at times, uh, you know, kind of a tenuous relationship with the city of Chicago. Now you have somebody who knows how to handle the business side of things. Yeah. And that's exactly what he's here to do. It just, the football people like us think, Oh, okay. You know, you set out to do this. You have the money. You're going to buy this. You're going to purchase. You purchase the land. The Bears are responsible for the construction of the stadium, the stadium itself, but everything around it is what they need help with taxpayer dollars. And I think sometimes we think that might be easier because we can just talk about it instead of massaging the politics of how you get this thing pushed through. It's yeah. so incredibly complicated. We are in a state that is known for – you know, bureaucracy and making things incredibly political (laughs) and incredibly difficult, especially the county in which we live in, in Cook County. So this should come as no surprise that there are some hiccups in this process, but I think it's way too early to say they're going to punt on Arlington Heights and that it's not going to go through because as much as Kevin Warren says, I don't believe in negotiating tactics, he's not going to say, yeah, I believe in negotiating tactics. He's going to call his bluff. (laughs) The smartest thing he can do yeah. is, you know, move make it forward seem and be like, like I'll okay. leave. Like if, yeah. if you guys don't want, if you guys are like not gonna, if Arlington Heights, if you're not gonna make it easy for us or easier for us or be willing to work with us on certain things, we'll go somewhere else. Yeah. No, it's here's here's the interesting nugget that came out of that to me, and I don't know if it, like Lake Forest entering the chat, even Waukegan entering the chat. The part that people might miss on that is that is not Cook County. That is Lake County. County. Mm -hmm. I can tell you as somebody who grew up there, uh, taxes are a lot cheaper. They still expensive. Lake Forest taxes are ridiculous, by the way. You go in there, you still getting taxed. But like Waukegan and stuff like that, the taxes are a lot cheap, like vastly cheaper. Like I bought my house here and, you know, spend a little money on it, little money, little money, nothing crazy. Uh, And my mom looked at me like I was insane. Are you Cook County out there? I am. So Westchester is still Cook County. Okay. 
I so, am too. Yeah, the taxes all, all here. Are, county stuff goes sure. into that. My mom looked at me like I was insane. She was like, "You can move up here and have five bedrooms for what you paid for that." And I was like, "I know, but you know, yeah, I, I, I don't want to come back. But uh, maybe I should have went back. But it's it's one of those things where." Lake Forest entering the conversation, I think, could be a little more of a realistic option. It has a similar Arlington Heights type feel. There is a downtown type of thing in Lake Forest, um, closer to everything else that the Bears do, closer to where a lot of the Chicago Bears live. Do you think that Lake Forest could be a real possibility in this, or is it kind of on the same level as Waukegan? I I heard, like... I heard what Kevin Warren said, like how Lake when he's on his way to Arlington IT he had heard from Lake Forest or, or something of that nature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still we haven't we don't have any sort of concrete information. Did Lake Forest come out with a stadium proposal? Did yeah. they say where it would be? I just I look at this from like more of like a more te- more cities are going to do this. You and I when the when Waukegan yeah. entered the chat a couple <laughs> weeks ago during OTAs. I remember being like, you know, Rockford's going to eventually enter the chat. Let's do North, it. North Chicago was your idea. Let's do it. Like Lake for, uh, the lakefront property that they have yeah. up there, which is kind of similar to Waukegan, probably underutilized. More cities we just are opened going the to beach. do this. Yeah, like this is not <laughs> – I don't think there's ever going to – like until – until people behind the scenes, like, again, this will be stuff that leaks out from business reporters, from people who cover city government. Until we know, hey, there's a hold up here or this whole thing's going to fall through. Yeah. Everybody would be wise if you're a mayor of a city just to get your name out there, to draw some interest. A lot of this is good publicity. Like, hey, Waukegan, they might have the resources to do this. They could get yeah. involved with the charter franchise in the NFL when this team has been housed in Chicago for so long, why wouldn't you at least give out the perception that you're interested? Like every city should be interested in having an NFL franchise. Like it is a net economic benefit. And I can say that without knowing the specifics, because look at every NFL city minus Oakland really. And that's frankly because of how the city of Oakland handled the former Oakland, now Las Vegas Raiders and the stadium in which they played in. But Go, go look at like how Santa Clara in that area surrounding Levi stadium, when they built that stadium, like I know they moved away about 40 miles from candlestick from San Francisco down to Santa Clara. That area is awesome. Like, I mean, it's an easy stadium to get to from the highway. It's a big stadium. It's got a great, great in and out access from the parking lot. Like they made that thing. So it would benefit the people around them. Like the Chicago Bears aren't going to skip steps here. Yeah. At least, you, at least you would hope. And knowing from Kevin Warren's background, trust me. If you have not been to Minis- if you haven't been to Minnesota, if you haven't been to US Bank Stadium, I urge you plan for the the Monday night game against the Vikings this year. That's one. Of, it, it, the stadium is one that's always brought up when we sit with George McCaskey and ask him about you know stadiums, SoFi Stadium, Allegiant, places they have pulled from for to get ideas about what they would want to do. But think about the surrounding area too. It's not that it's just on an island in the middle of nowhere and it's impossible yeah, yeah. to access. There's you know, what Kevin Warren did in Minnesota. It's close to public. Tra- it's you know, public transportation. You can get, you know, ride share. You can drive. There's the light rail there. Like there's so many things that make it easily accessible. That's what they want to make sure they have in place with Arlington Heights. But you can't move forward with that without some sort of, you know, you know, good faith from the city of Arlington Heights that like that stuff will be possible that you're not paying, you know, out the wazoo and taxes for land that was valued at one thing. And then they tell you it's valued at another, like you just can't teeter, you know, that line and expect that things won't get ugly if you just agree to whatever's out there. So as much as these are not negotiating tactics, according to Kevin Warren, (laughs) every time he talks is a negotiating (laughs) tactic because he's putting information out there that he is electing to put out there, knowing that Arlington Heights is not saying anything right now, or very, very little. And that, and that's good because the Bears look like they're controlling the conversation around this. Yeah, it, and the, the one thing I love that he says, says Chicago shouldn't be losing out to Indy and Detroit, so shots fired there uh, <laughs> to other and other places for big events. I was like, Dad, did, hey, didn't bring He's up right. Minnesota in there, though. Didn't bring up Minnesota. He's like, hey, I did a good job on that one. A lot of dead birds in Minnesota, I heard, though. <laughs> I heard a lot yeah. of dead birds in Minnesota. What's going on? They fixed that yet? I, I haven't heard anything birds. about that in a while. I remember when that, like when, in 2016, the stadium opened and apparently there were a bunch of dead 
bunch of birds that flew into the glass part. So, you know, it's shaped like a Viking ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So where it comes to, you know, I think it's on the north. I'm like looking at the stadium in my head, like the north, northeast corner of the stadium. Like it comes to a head with glass. It's where the doors open. Yeah. Um, this huge, big doors. And all these birds kept flying into the stadium. In 2017 was my first year covering the team. There are all these protests outside of the stadium before games. And I was like, what's going on here? And they're like, oh, it's because, you know, PETA <laughs> and other, um, ec- uh, other uh, ecological organizations, yeah. animal rights, whatever. Like, that was a big thing there. But, yeah, I mean, one thing that you mentioned with, like, the big events that, like, Chicago should not be losing out. I mean, the draft is going to Detroit. Indianapolis yeah. is the convention city. Like, so I, yeah. I get what Kevin Warren's saying there. The combine would not work in Chicago. Uh, the Big Ten championship probably doesn't work. Eat, like, of course, you want an indoor stadium for those things, but walk the walkability factor. Yeah, that's Indy, the main. Indy thing. is a small city for a reason, and it works there. Chicago is a massive city. If he's trying to make Arlington Heights into what those places are, it's going to take a lot of work just because of the sheer number of people in this metro area. But I get what he's saying, and if you are the Chicago Bears, you're not just thinking stadium for the purpose of football games only. You're thinking Super Bowls. You're thinking Final Fours. You're yeah. thinking Big Ten Championship, College Championships. You're thinking of all of these incredible big draw events, and that's what he wants to make sure that they're in position to do. You have to you, – and you can't have restrictions on how you want to build it. Like if you have the, the – if you want to envision a massive stadium that can host major events – you can't make concessions on certain things. And I, no. I think that's kind of what we're getting at here with the overall product and overall kind of like dialogue around the team right now. How far away is too far away? That's that's the real question. You Rockford. Know what I mean? Rockford is too far away. <laughs> I'm just telling you, they're going to enter the chat here at some point and be like, look, we're part of off 90. There's highway And there's access. nothing but space. Yes. That's the problem. Point the more the southern Lloyd. you go, there's nothing but space. Joliet uh, will enter the chat at some point too. I think we need to draw some sort of line though that they can't go s- further south. Then can't go further south than I eighty. They're not. That's what, a what long, is the county down there? Yeah, that's a. Uh, is that DeKalb County? Da- no, I thought DeKalb's DeKalb? up towards Rockford. No, DeKalb's up towards Rockford. What is down there? That would be. I don't know. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, I think. Don't we have two Lake Counties in Illinois? I think that's also Lake County again. Is it? I think Illinois has two Lake I might be wrong on that. I, I don't think that's possible to have two counties. I don't know. Name. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, Ocean County, whatever it is. I'm uh, looking think, it up right now. I'm going to try it. It could be McHenry County, Will that County. That might be McHenry. Kane no, somebody, County. Kane, Kane County. Kane County. Familiar, Kane right? County. Like, okay, I don't know. Somebody I mean, else has a Lake County. I know I'm not tripping on that. Indiana, has, Lake, Indiana has a Lake County. Oh, that's Indiana where, has a Lake County. That's where Gary County. is. Yeah. Like that yeah. Whole area. Well, that's, that, that's basically still Chicago. Yeah, more or less. <laughs> they tried it once before. We'll see if they try so it again. We got two late counties. Uh, let's keep this thing moving along. Appreciate you guys for showing love. Hit that like button. Subscribe to the page. We are five days a week over here on the Chicago Bears podcast, Monday through Friday. So stay tuned in with us. You can catch me and Courtney two days out of the week, Tuesday and Thursday. Make sure to be here this Thursday as we get a little eye on the enemy action here uh, from the other side. We'll have a uh, little Packers beat reporters in here. I, I love it, man. I, I love I love doing these weeks where we just get to focus on one team mm-hmm. that we specifically hate and for what reason. But Courtney has hit us with a little bit of information that I thought was valid information to bring to the podcast. Shout out to EO for bringing this topic up as well. Um, the Packers... As much as the Bears look at the Packers as rivalries, do not look at the Chicago Bears as their biggest rival. You have said that it's a possibility that Minnesota is probably the Packers' biggest rival as of right now. Mm-hmm. Is that the point that you're making here? No, I, I yeah, absolutely. And I don't no one will argue that because historically speaking, Bears Packers is always going to be the draw because of the brand recognition, because you had two quarterbacks for Green Bay for the better course of 30 years who dominated the rivalry. Aaron Rodgers had a 24 and five record against the Chicago Bears. Those games were always on in prime time. Sunday always. night football was like the spot that was reserved for some reason for that rivalry. And I just, 
I tend to think a lot of that is probably, I wouldn't say pressure, but probably some influence from, you know, ownership in not just the bears, but like owners of the like high powered, you know, teams, the charter franchises who want to make sure to preserve old rivalries and the rivalries that came into, you know, brought the NFL into existence. But bears Packers has been surpassed in a big way, especially within the last 10, 15 years by bear, by Packers Vikings. I don't think there's many Packers fans I don't think there's many Vikings fans, but like taking the one team that's involved in both rivalries, I don't think there's many Packers fans who are going to tell you, oh yeah, that Bears game is is one that they look forward to every year and expect like big things because frankly, they've won, Chicago's won twice since 2015. They've been swept in in this era, the 2020s. Like they have been, it's, they're, they're six and zero oh against the Chicago Bears. You go back to 2018, the second game of the year or second game of, of, you know, the two times that they played. Hold was that up, 20, now, don't Mitch got a win? Yeah. 24, 23 in 2018. Okay, so that's okay. the only, Oh, dang, like, that was a close right. game. That was the latest. Yeah, you said just in the twenties. Yeah. yeah. So like that, and that's 2018 before <laughs> that, you have to go back to 2015 when they won, uh, you know, the last, the, I don't know if that was at the last game of the year because they played on Thanksgiving yeah. day. Yeah, yeah. Um, regardless, it just isn't as much of a rivalry right now because it has been so lopsided. The The whole idea of a rivalry is that I'm trying to prevent you from beating me because there's something per there's a personal element to it. Yeah. The bears have been blown out of the water by the Packers for a long time. And it's been so lopsided where the quarterback advantage that green Bay had was just so astronomical that it wasn't ever something that the bears could 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 you know get to and you know to try to even it out but i think it's telling again bears packers is to to the bears fan base it will always be i think they will always look at it and hold it in higher regard than the packers do packers fans do yeah until until there's it flips flips. and You know, um, what was it? Preston Smith, when he got to Green Bay and he was talking about, wasn't it him who said something about like the Bears Packers rivalry and like that he didn't consider it a rivalry? Yeah. Um, And that's, I think that's some trash talk, but there's also probably some truth to it too. When you've been on the winning side of this for so many years and it doesn't feel like these games are close, I mean, take a look at the first game last year, the the 28 28 19. Scores closer than it than it indicates. Than that because, game was, yeah. And yeah, twenty seven ten. The second game when it was at Soldier Field, these games aren't close. When the game's over by halftime, it doesn't feel like a rivalry because it's not because the yeah. other team's owning you. And of course, we all know about the Aaron Rodgers, the I own you thing that he yelled to Bears fans at Soldier Field. He had a point. It was very valid. Now we'll see with the first game of the year being bears Packers, if that can flip because it is a new era and now the bears have a perfect opportunity against a team that doesn't have number 12 playing for it yeah. to, to jump out to a different start, a better start in this new era of bears Packers. And I think that it, it, it hurts to hear it. I'm not going to lie. It, it always hurts to hear the Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre stats versus the bears, mm-hmm. but realistically, this has been my point on Bears-Packers. Bears-Packers is a rivalry, like you said, because of the start of football, the names that are involved, uh, you know. And it's funny hearing, like when my dad talks about Bears-Packers, he talks about it as like, we just penciled in two wins a year. Right, like there were years where the Bears just kicked the crap out of the Packers. And over the last 40 years, it's been the Packers kicking the crap out of the Bears. And I've said... That is not a rivalry. That is just a bludgeoning from one side to the other. I want this new era. This is all I want for this new era of Bears Packers. I said, I want Jordan Love to be just good enough that they can't get rid of him. Because to me, that means that there are competitive games back and forth. That means there's something to fight for. That means that there's something to argue about. There's not much. All I got for you is that Rex Grossman and, and Aaron Rodgers have the same amount of NFC championship yeah. games, which is a wild stat to throw out there when you really think about it. But like, or I should say NFC championship wins, but it, it's just, it's one of those things where to me in my lifetime, I've hated the Packers forever and I've just hated them because like 
every time we're on prime time, I know this is going to be embarrassing tomorrow. I, I can see it. <laughs> yeah. I can see how this is going to go. Like I had a little, I was talking to Lance yesterday and I was like, I forgot how bad you guys actually beat the Packers sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like when they uh, opened up the 2006 season and it was like 26 to nothing. I was like, that was a dream. Like I didn't, I didn't even remember that being real because I was like, we can't beat Brett Favre that, like that. But it's, it's one of those things where this isn't a rivalry. This has been a bludgeoning. And I'm just hoping that this side of it is now going to be more of a rivalry. And when I say rivalry, I mean more competitive. Yeah. And getting Rodgers out of the division, of course, when that news broke in March, like that's or April, that was news to every Bears fan's ears because finally it felt like, okay, there is a chance to be to make this a level playing field. We have not seen Jordan Love, and, and he could be better than most people think. I know that there's still this element of mystery when it comes to the Packers quarterback because he's been there since 2020. We've seen him start one or two games, a couple relief outings. I mean, yeah. what he did against the Eagles this last year is what stands out to me when Rodgers got hurt after um, you know, early on in the game. Yeah. Now you have a chance where you can realistically – look at the way your roster stacks up versus the way their roster stacks up and say there is a positional advantage here. There might be one here for the Packers, yeah. might be one here for the Bears, but you don't have the quarterback position anymore in this glaring, wow, they are just so much better than the Chicago Bears because you have a future Hall of Famer playing on, you know, playing that position on the other team. Yeah. I I still like if as I if I'm looking at this roster, I still think about like how many like first rounders they have on defense, whether it's Kenny Clark, whether it's Devontae Wyatt, yeah. you know, Quay Walker, Rashawn Gary, Jair Alexander, Darnell Savage, like the list goes on and on and on. Eric Stokes. So like you look at that, you say, Well, how could they possibly, you know, how can the Bears possibly, you know, match up to that? And they might not this year, but eventually at least it makes it easier when like you get the hardest position to have you know, to, to master at quarterback to when you have such a discrepancy between talent, between experience, age, whatever. Yeah. Now it feels like, okay, well maybe they can take advantage of other areas to right the ship, at least in terms of from Chicago's perspective of how this rivalry looks and what it could look like in 2023 when there's been a very significant changing of the guard. Yeah. And, and here's the weird part, right? Like it feels like it flipped. Right? Like, you look at the Packers defense, you're like, name, name, name. Love it, love it, love it. And uh, then I just look at the Bears offense, I'm like, Justin Fields. Right? Like, that mm -hmm. That to me, now he's got to do it. Like, prove me right on this one. But that feels like the Bears coming in with Lance Briggs, Brian Urlacher, Peanut Tillman, Tommy Harris, all of these names. You're like, oh, we've got to kill these muds. It's about to dominate. And then, you know. Brett Favre does what Brett Favre does or Aaron Rodgers does what Aaron Rodgers does. You know what I mean? The, it, it feels like there's now it, it's again the flip. I just need it to be a little bit more even. That's all I'm hoping for out of this thing at the end of the day. And I mean, here's the realistic part. Here's my biggest fear in all of this, right? The Bears climb the Packers mountaintop. If Roger Goodell's handing out scripts, this is the script you need to write out here. They, they climb the Packers mountaintop somehow find their way into a Super Bowl and Aaron Rodgers is on the other side with the oh Jets. Gosh. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. We all, we all love some full circle uh, I might cry. lines. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, what, hopefully the scripts have not been handed out. Um, and hopefully, I mean, Rodgers retires before that happens. I mean, we still have no guarantee that he'll be with the Jets after one year. I feel like that's going to be one that we have to evaluate. But yeah. I think when you've been part of a rivalry, like to, to circle back to the Preston Smith comments, I believe it was Good Morning Football or mm -hmm. one of the NFL Network programs he was on. You know, they're talking about this as a rivalry. And he's like, I've never lost to the Bears since I've been here. That's like crazy. when when players have that sort of mindset, of course they're not going to view it as yeah. a rivalry. Of That's course insane. they're like when it's been so lopsided, it's it's hard to like drum up the hype about it because what do we do? Every Bears Packers week, we're in the locker room. Asking, especially the younger players, what do you know about the rivalry? Yeah. How is it being talked about in the locker room? How do you feel going into it, knowing it is one of the oldest and most storied yet recently lopsided rivalries in the NFL? Like at one time, it was a lot more even than the what than how it looks now. 
And you get a lot of the same answers. Like, of course, it's the brand recognition of both teams that will draw up interest. Yeah. But really, you know, the Bears aren't talking this thing up behind the scenes, like Bears, Packers, like outside of the history element. I'll give Matt Eberflus, Eberflus a lot of credit about that. He has been adamant about the history of this team. He knows how much that means to the McCaskies. He brings this stuff up just so players have an idea. Like, yeah, you guys have been on the losing side of it. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers had a 24-5 and record against the Chicago Bears as a starting quarterback. But look beyond that. Look about look at the history of this. This is one yeah. that, like, when you think of the NFL, you think of a couple There's of different that. rivalries. You think of Cowboys and uh, Washington. You can think of, you know, the Cowboys and the San Francisco 49ers. I mean, that's a team that has multiple rivalries and the brand recognition where nationally those rivalries, no matter who is on the winning side of it, those rivalries are still a thing. They're still talked about. Bears Packers is one of those. But – in the Packers locker room, when you feel as confident as they do, you can make comments like that because they really haven't been tested outside of a couple games here and there within recent years. I mean, when Preston Smith came over from Washington, I want to say like four or five years ago, I mean, let, let's take a look at this. In 2019, like they've swept the Bears since for the last four seasons, they swept them. It was yeah. 10 to three. That was a really ugly game to open the 2019 season. And then the Packers won 21-13. Um, they eliminated them from postseason contention. Uh, so that was 2019. Then it was 35-16, 41-25 in 2020, the COVID year. 24-14, 45-30 in 2021 in that bad Sunday night football game. Last year, 28-19, 27-10. If none of these games are close, it's not going to feel like it carries the same magnitude. So yeah. one locker room is not going to be like, oh, yeah, we love this rivalry. We're going in to beat their brains out. They're, they're like, yeah, we, we've done that. We've been doing that. We expect to do that. Yeah, it's 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 sad. It really is. I mean, Bears are now 10 games under uh, 500 against the Packers, 105, 95. And it's hilarious because I remember what was that? Was that maybe 15? When they 16? won in 15, when the Packers took the lead, like it was just like, oh, God, like we've lost so much. Like the Bears lead was massive. I think that's the part people forget. Yeah, <laughs> I, no, Brent you're came. right. Because it, the tie came in 2016. So in 2015 yeah. was when they split. The Bears won the second meeting. So it was, they had the 94, 92, and six advantage. So there were six yeah. ties that happened along the way. Um, I actually would love to. That's a good trivia question. When's the last time Bears Packers tied? Um, like a tied an actual game. And then the Packers took advantage after that 2016 year. And it becomes Packers when they sweep the Bears in 17. That would have been Mitch's first year. 96, 94, and 6 in favor of Green Bay, and then they haven't given it back. But the Bears had owned this rivalry for, yeah. like, if you go and just take a look at, like, you know, all of these years, like, I think you'd have to go back to, you know, there's a chance, maybe I'm even wrong on this, maybe they never, until 2017, they never, yeah, the Packers, I'm looking right now, Packers had a, last time they had a lead in this rivalry, can you guess the year? Ooh. I mean, it was like 40 years of win. I'm going to say 61. 1932. Oh. That was the year that the Bears won the NFL championship. So they went all the, you have to go. Or, yeah, you have to go all the way back to the pre-World War II, way before the merger, pre-World War II <laughs> days to find the last time before 2017 that the Packers uh, had the edge in this rivalry. But it doesn't it feel just probably recency bias. It feels like it's been so much longer, but it's, that's why we can't forget not, the history element of it. Like it's not we, recency court. It's been like 40 years now. I know. It's not recent. <laughs> but no, but doesn't it feel like it, with like the recent, like since 2017? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, because yeah. those games are so competitive for so many years where it that's wasn't the just too. the Packers sweeping the Bears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like in the 2010s, that like wasn't such a commonplace occurrence where you know, or going back to the 2000s decade, that wasn't yeah. as much of a commonplace occurrence. The Bears went to a Super Bowl in that decade. Yeah. They won one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine meetings in the 2000s. The Packers had a 12 yeah. 8 advantage, or Bears won eight meetings then. Bears, uh, Packers had a 12 8 advantage. It, for a while, at least it was less lopsided with the Bears still carrying the yeah. torch as like, we are on top of this rivalry. But since since 2017, it flipped, and 
who knows, maybe the 2020s will be, we'll look back, you know, when we get into the, what what the next, the 2030s and see, okay, once Rogers got out of, out of the division, they started (laughs) evening things out. It's going to be about, by the way, the tie, just, just take a guess at the, (laughs) the last tie in in the eighties, I would say. 1953. Okay. Yeah. Like, and I mean, ties in the NFL, remember they kind of weren't a thing for a while. And then the 2019 season, I remember I covered a Minnesota or 20, 2018, 2018 season. I covered a Vikings Packers game that week two where Daniel Carlson, who's now the Raiders kicker missed three field goals and the Packers and Vikings tied that game. That was the first tie I've ever been a part of. It was a very weird, weird feeling leaving the locker room. That's, that's such a weird, ew, I, just, I, I don't get that. I don't like ties. I don't, I, I don't really get don't. it. I don't it, like the new overtime rules. Just like find me a winner. Yeah. I just don't get it. It's like, just play the game out. <laughs> Like what? What's gonna happen? Like, oh my God! Everybody's so tired. That's what. That's why I said. Like you get to a certain point and you just do the. You you go to shootout. You do the. You do the field goal off. But <laughs> make kickers important again. Yeah. Right. That, that's why you keep an extra guy on the team that all he does is kick sixty yarders. That's, that's the, you have an extra kicker on the team. He just kicks 65, 70 yards. That's all he does. I don't know. Uh, but hey. That's another edition of the Chicago Bears podcast. Hopefully we're heading towards a better decade with the Bears because I will say, man, it is tough. When you look at this thing, since 2016, loss, 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 win, loss, 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 win. We just need a win. Start off the season with a win. It's Bears Packers week for Courtney Cronin. It is Pat the Designer back at it again. Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the page, and stay tuned in with us all week as we break down the Chicago Bears. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Peace.